Each year, the Republican newspaper devotes an entire section to regional economic development for its outlook. It includes reporting on education, jobs, the arts, and more. To discuss this year's section and one of its featured stories, which honed in on Springfield, I spoke with the city's chief development officer, Tim Sheehan, and Cynthia Simison, executive editor of The Republican. Well, we do it each year to give a kind of broad perspective on what's happening across western Massachusetts, and that's typically Hamden, Hampshire, and Franklin counties. Um, just to look at positive things that are happening and give perspective on uh, things like unemployment, workforce opportunity programs, education, health care, entrepreneurship, the whole range of things that really uh, keep our economic engine And it's running. a hefty section. It comes it out is. in the Sunday paper. came out earlier in February. For you, you know, as this is an annual thing, what stood out to you this year as sort of new or different or caught your attention maybe? What stood out for me was a message that was actually uh, Congressman Richard Neal uh, voiced in one of his perspective pieces is that the region really is at a, at a once in a lifetime spot where everything seems to be converging uh, between education, healthcare, as I mentioned, entrepreneurship. Everything is rife for the taking and to, to build on that success, as, as Roger Crandall from Mass Mutual says, we have to keep the momentum, momentum going. Mm. And Tim, your role here in the city as chief development officer is something that's feeding that, that idea and that engine. And you were, you've been here since July, but no stranger to the region, came up from Connecticut, but born and raised here, right? Yes. So you've had a lot of opportunities to sort of to observe Springfield, but also now working behind the scenes. And the paper asked a big question, you know, what's next for Springfield? And Stephanie Barry joked that really there's no resting on your laurels in <laughs> economic development. You get one thing done and it's right on to the next, right? So no, no rest for the weary. As you look at where Springfield is today, what do you think? There has been, as uh, Cynthia and I were talking about it before we started, uh, there was, uh, the table's been set and it's a great, starting place. Um, and what we need to do is nurture it and grow the the successes that we've had in Springfield from a development standpoint. But there's so many things even beyond the casino. We were talking about the the whole issue of the, the um, entrepreneurship uh, environment that is coming in Springfield and growing in Springfield very strong. Um, you, you're looking at, you know, interest in hotel development happening in the city. Um, expanding the convention uh, and visitors market uh, into the city. Um, so there, there's a whole host of things that we're looking to grow upon. Cynthia, for you uh, at the paper, do you hear from existing business owners as you think about this balance of nurturing what's here, as Tim said, but also uh, you know, welcoming in new entities, whether it's MGM or CRRC? Is there a tension there? Um, I don't think there's a attention, there's actually an inclusiveness and, and uh, uh, we're all in this together sense, I feel. Um, you look at the community colleges, for instance, and how they've risen to the occasion, developing programs that really are laser focused on the jobs that are needed to be filled in this region, whether it be manufacturing, healthcare. Um, they are targeting their education programs to meet those needs. Yeah, we've seen several local institutions focus on marijuana recently, mm -hmm. which if you think back to maybe five, six years ago, that would have been a completely radical and unheard of concept. Mm -hmm. And here you are, colleges are, are embracing it. Mm -hmm. Tim, one of the things that you pointed out to Stephanie Barry was this idea of uh, pedestrians being really integral to development of a community. Can you tell us a little bit more about your perspective there? Well, it, one of the important things for any city is to have a, a, a dynamic uh, pedestrian environment that really is engaging with the folks that are walking down the street. Um, a walk becomes that much more entertaining if there's positive things for you to see uh, and engage with. Uh, and, and that's the whole issue. Uh, so that it, it, transparency uh, as to what's happening inside of the building uh, so that if I'm walking by, I see activity, I see something that might interest me, that's engaging me to potentially walk through the door and uh, stop and spend some time. 
Yeah, and that was one of the big things that was negotiated with MGM as they looked to build out this casino was an idea of having something that you could look into that it wouldn't be this insular campus mm -hmm. kind of plopped into downtown Springfield. Have you heard from business community members about kind of what they're thinking, like if that's worked in terms of having people coming in and out and making use of an entire downtown and not just MGM? I think that's very much happening in Springfield. I, I think you see it during the summer and uh, when you have the events at Court Square, uh, a lot happening at Mass Mutual, uh, a more robust and growing entertainment district and some longtime key players that are keeping people coming back. Mm. A lot of economic development in recent years, Tim, has been sort of hitched to MGM and the way it developed and its just overall opening downtown. A piece that remains on the table is that housing component. Some recent history, uh, some recent news related to that is some an agreement that the city has made with MGM because they were given a little latitude on the concept of needing to develop that housing downtown. With the $16 million that MGM has pledged to invest on the Elm Street property, how, what's next there? How's that going to roll out? Ultimately, there needs to be some environmental work that's going to be undertaken by the city on that property. Then the property will be transferred over uh, to the development entity, and the development entity will then be taking it through with uh, the participation of mass housing. Mass housing is ultimately going to be the depository for the funding, um, and they will be processing the draws as the developer advances into construction. To your point about seeing people doing things in the downtown, that's a property, it's a big property, it's a gorgeous property from the outside, long vacant, yes. plopped right there in the downtown. So for you, what do you think that will do for the downtown once it's 60 or so housing units, right? Yes. It, it's a gateway property, both for the casino and the city and for the convention center as well. Um, it, it, traversing from the casino over to Symphony Hall where... Um, MGM ultimately has got um, a management role uh, associated with Symphony Hall. Um, it, it, that is not a pleasant experience today. And we need to make that a much better experience. And with that 12,000 square feet of activated ground floor uses, that'll be much, 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 much better in terms of uh, the, the connectedness between the heart of the city with MGM. Mm. Cynthia, whether you're looking at MGM's recent development and opening in the downtown, CRRC, redevelopment of Union Station, a few of the big projects that have really hit in recent years, and then I'll have you think back to 2004 when a state control board was here, finances in the city were in dire straits. Can you think back to that time and what did you think of your prognosis for the city then? Um, we've always had optimism because uh, I, along with my predecessor, uh, lived through some pretty dire times watching the city uh, roll itself out and reinvent itself. Um, so I've always had a sense of confidence that it would come. Um, not everyone sees the casino or any single project as, as the savior. I think it really is the combined efforts of the communities. I mean, I, I think about the role philanthropy is playing right now. Um, you know, the donation that the uh, Lyman Wood and his wife made to Square One, for instance, that's allowing third shift workers to go to work at Smith & Wesson and know their children are cared for overnight. Yeah. What a unique program. How special is that? And it's forward thinking people like them who are going to help move us forward. Tim, as I mentioned earlier, you came from Connecticut, but you have a strong connection to the region. Is there a sense when you talk to outsiders to talk about whether it's booking a convention here or just coming to be in Springfield, is there a sense that it's sort of dogged by its unfortunate financial history? No, I think there's a real optimism about Springfield and uh, it, it, an upbeat attitude about what can be done in Springfield. and. Um, uh, we've actually seen it uh, in terms of what has come forward. Our downtown is m more activated now than it's been for quite some time. Uh, and I think that renewed investment in downtown is spurring other people to look at it, uh, give it a second look. <laughs>